congratulating Andy Joe. Well, I'm devastated. I don't know about you, but uh, that's an amazing, amazing work. Thank you. Um, and this, this has such authenticity. I would think it comes from getting the experiences and the, the uh, incidents from your mother's experiences. Is that true? Yeah, experience. Uh what I like to say about the film is like uh, uh, a fiction based on real, uh, real, real uh, uh, experience. Uh, my purpose since the beginning was not to depict uh, all the situation my mother passed through. Uh, with uh, the co-scriptwriter Magali Puzol, we took the liberty also to. Uh, allow ourselves being influenced by maybe more con contemporary events. Uh, can I give an example? Of course. Yeah. Um, at the end of the film, uh, the main character, Shu, she takes off her jacket uh, in front of a lot of victims of the Khmer Rouge uh, in order to protect uh, a Khmer Rouge girl. Uh, my mother never uh, passed through such situation before. Um, during the development of the film, I, I read an article uh, in the newspaper and it deals with uh, some women in Cambodia who were victims uh, of the government. They lost uh, their land and they ruin it inside the mob and they complain about it. And the policemen arrive and beat them. And uh, at least they remove all their clothes, uh, so being naked. And they were yelling something like, you took everything from us, just take the rest, take it, take the, uh, yeah. And the policeman stops, because nudity is very taboo in Cambodia. And such situation appears very strong uh, in my mind and I wanted to pay a tribute to those women and I assume the fact that uh, there is no mention of that in the film of course but I think that the Khmer Rouge context for example is the perfect situation to retranslate uh, such a human situation. What did your mother and uh, brother think of the film? Um, I will talk about my mother first. Um, I, I showed her the movie, but uh, not in... In fact, I wanted to show the film to my little brother first, because uh, at one moment of the production, I didn't have enough distance anymore. And I was not sure if the film still makes sense or not. Um, and my mom comes to have a seat uh, with us. And I thought she was sleeping, but she wanted to watch the film. So, uh, and the film only exists in French version now. And my mom doesn't understand French. Uh, so, but she, there is a universal language inside the film, uh, picture and music, and uh, of course sound and ambience and. She was able to recognize some some characters at the beginning of the film, and it was very moving because uh, we created them sometimes without any picture. She also, in terms of uh, because we needed to improve some narration stuff for for the storytelling, sometimes we allow ourselves to merge uh, existing characters into one, for example because it doesn't make sense to create one character just for one situation. So we needed characters to have much more time in the film in order to uh, transmit empathy. So my mom recognized, didn't recognize the character, but she asked me 
it is very strange because I feel that this character ha looks like two uh, characters I mentioned to you before. And when she's able to recognize uh, such protagonists, uh, yeah, it's uh, very strong uh, to me also. Uh, when she's faced to the Khmer Rouge character, she becomes her face turns red and she turns very angry and maybe yeah I, I need I needed to calm her calm calm her down sometimes and say saying some things like it's just a drawing so it's okay. <laughs> it'll work yeah and uh, but the most important moment for me when she watched the film was. Uh, maybe when she was mute in front of some shots when the character representing her was uh, with her past husband because this film is also a tribute to this man and she shared a lot of me about him sometimes even in front of my father so it's not very really <laughs> but um, yeah in some way, I think she still loves him, so that's why I wanted to depict him in such a way in the film. It's uh, so um, interesting, the contrast that you present between the beautiful settings and the devastating things that are happening within the settings. And also, the, the, um, the use of animation, off-screen violence. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, but can I also talk about uh, what you mentioned? Yes, about, the setting uh, and the... Uh, when I go to Cambodia, um, I consider myself as a tourist because I was born and raised in France. Uh, and I have the Westerner eyes of Cambodia. I, I mentioned that because it's important for me to that no one is confused about my point of view. I'm not Cambodian. and. So when I when when I go to Cambodia, I'm really impressed by the environment, the landscape, especially in the countryside because the land is very flat, the horizon is infinite, and the sky so the sky is very wide, and between such inside such an environment, I can only feel like a dust, and it's quite it's quite spiritual a spiritual experience. So I wanted to translate that in the film in some way to depict. What, what I feel what, when I in front of, of those landscape in Cambodia. And there is a relation between the nature and the characters also in the film. Sometimes we have very big, very huge uh, backgrounds erasing almost characters, human. And sometimes you have very close shots on characters which highlight emotions, psychology, and erasing the, the environment. So environment, nature, and human are completely split in the film till the end with the last, the, with the, the last shot where we have 50% on the top of sky, 50% of the land on the bottom, and two human on the middle. And to me, it just means that between sky and earth, there is life, just uh, keep living. And uh, I wanted to finish the film with this uh, spiritual touch. Maybe. So, mm, what was this? You know, the uh, off-screen violence. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I made this choice uh, since the beginning. It was important for me to. I didn't want to attract the audience uh, through the violence and with the violence. Uh, why? Because. Um, during my short life uh, experience, uh, every time I I talk with new generation of Cambodian, uh, we are when we are talking about the Khmer Rouge uh, history, our parents, uh, the victims, very quickly we start to share about the atrocities, and um, it, to me it, it reminds me some things like. A kind of competition, you know. Um, me and my friend, sometimes we, before when we talk about such atrocities, 
we talk about it in order maybe sometimes to prove that it was real. But it was real. And I didn't want the film to require such uh, things to exist. Also for maybe for Western audience, and I position myself as a Westerner, such atrocities and the, the, the crimes committed by the Khmer Rouge can sound exotic. Exotic and it can attract, it can be the point where uh, the audience can focus on because it's not some things we are used, we used to see, we used to hear about every day in our daily lives. And I didn't want that. And I didn't want to make the film impressive because of such stuff. So there's no listing of the atrocities. There is no, uh, we only suggest the violence. And because it's not the point of the film. So uh, I didn't want to depict the Khmer Rouge. If you see the film, inside the film, uh, at no moment we are explaining the ideology of the Khmer Rouge. Uh, their, I mean, what they want in terms of politics, economies, etc. is history also, uh, also. It is just a human scale movie, very intimate. And I wanted to put every character at the same level. There's no good or evil. Everyone will try to survive, to exist. And in order to survive in such context, sometimes we reveal ourselves. And um, yeah, just a human scale story. Well, I can't imagine it being any more devastating than having our imaginations take over and having us imagine what, what was going on off screen. The, this is, uh, I think, the power of cinema and the, great, the greatest trend of animation to uh, increase, to play with the imagination uh, through the sounds, through the character's reaction, the character's expression. We can imagine what surrounds them and sometimes we don't need to show it because this is a, the cinema is an experience with the audience and audience has to, I mean, the imagination uh, is also allowed to work. Is that why you chose to do this in animation rather than live action? What is it that animation brings to this that the other wouldn't? Uh, so I, I, I drew since uh, I was a child, so uh, the decision to make an animation film was completely natural. Um, and every time everyone asked me, why did you choose animation? But no one asked live action film director why we did choose live action. Um, so, but I needed to find argument, of course. I just, I cannot just answer uh, because I like animation. Why not? <laughs> because uh, you know, maybe in the US it works, but in France, when you want to find the funds to make the film, uh, it's not enough convincing, I think. Uh, and, but, yeah, so I. Imagine the film uh, as a live action in order to find the answer. And it would be quite disturbing for me to uh, have a real actress uh, representing my mom. Um, I didn't want that. Uh, and I'm really realistic about the second point, which is if the film was made through live action, uh, we will see Cambodian actors and actress. I'm no one, I'm nobody. So there's no chance the film to be maybe visible in Western countries. Uh, because it's sad to admit that, but in, for example, in Asia you have tons of films, in Western countries you have tons of films, and there are, there are many films uh, not well, not uh, distributed in Western countries, and it's the same for Western movies. Animation has no border, and that's why I can be here today to, to share with you. That's why I was able to also to go in many countries in Asia because animation has no border, and the style of this film uh, quite realistic, 
was made since the beginning because uh, I needed some things to be linked for the film to be linked to the reality. I didn't want cartoon style, of course. Um, according to the identity of the film, I think you understand why. Um, to be realistic and also to be linked to, I mean, history, us human, and uh, the power of animation of 2D animation is that I really believe that we are not showing only Cambodian, we are showing, showing human. And the result is that everywhere uh, the film had the chance to be screened in Asia. People in the, inside the audience came to me and sometimes starts to share their own experience, their, their own family story. And sometimes people are not directly related or completely not related to the, the, to the victims of the Khmer Rouge. And for a film to be able to allow people to share and to speak, I think it's a, well, it's a wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, production? It took about eight years, did you say, to create from start to finish or from conception to final production? Yeah, I started the project in 2009, just after my graduation. And uh, graduation from where? Uh, from Gobelin. Uh, Gobelin, the Gobelin the animation. Yeah. School. And of course, uh, without any experience, any short film uh, made uh, before, it's quite hard to start such process. But uh, I asked some people. Uh, Miguel Cruza, Miguel Cruzol. I asked them to follow me on this adventure, and my project bec becomes our project. And uh, it's quite easier to work with people, of course, because you cannot uh, give up. If you give up, uh, you just give up your friends also and your partners. So everyone needs to keep working together. I didn't want producer at the beginning because I wanted to work on the content to make like, to create a kind of sculpture, you know, as the more pre precise as possible. Because the day I will present this sculpture to the producer, he won't be able to correct anything. If he wants to try to correct something, he will destroy the sculpture. And we proceed like that, and I think I, f I thought too much, because the day I met the producer, he said, I believe in your expectation, what you want to do, and the policy of our company is not to change uh, what the authors uh, want to do. So we start. We sign with the producer in 2012. We have to do to create uh, uh, tones of picture, tones of uh, uh, text, and uh, the we didn't spend. We spent seven years at least. But uh, if we connect all the days together, it would, it would be only maybe one year and a half or two years. The, the, the times we, we waste was because uh, we needed to meet some commission, but uh, the, in terms of calendar, some commission was in January or other in April, so we, are, we have to wait. How many studios? You worked in different countries doing this? Yeah, four countries. Four, four countries? countries? Yeah three countries in Europe uh, because the project uh, was created in Europe uh, in France, in Luxembourg, in Belgium uh, to work with three countries in Europe allows you to get more funds from the Euro European Union so it doesn't make sense to work with only two countries you have to work with three countries uh, and um, I was uh, really, really dreaming and expecting to work with Cambodian uh, artist, but um, I had no idea and there was no studio, no artist, or in, or sometimes there are, but in terms of artistic level, it was not uh, enough for such film. But uh, I, have a, I had a classmate, he, today he lives in Cambodia because he met his wife there. And uh, he told me that, he uh, introduced me to a studio and he told me that if we made the film with a Cambodian artist, he will 
supervise everything and train all the artists. And so we start, and they spend six months, uh, he spent six months with the Cambodian young artists to train them to, and to be honest, in six months you cannot, uh, you cannot be like a European artist, and especially French artist. Why? Because in France, many cultures across in France, we grew up uh, and we we grew up uh, with uh, drawings and with art very very early in our life. And uh, I remember I yeah I start to draw at two or three, and everyone around me support me, and the museum are everywhere, art are everywhere, and it's really easy to. Uh, to be fed by, is it okay this English? Yes, to be fed by the art. To be fed yeah, by, yeah. By, by art and creation. And so in six months it's really complicated to, to, to train the artist, but uh, it was enough. So we send uh, uh, tons of uh, pictures for them. And um, it was strange because I, I, I was waiting for a lot of mistakes, a lot of uh, uh, retakes also uh, in order to f I, I, I thought I would f I would need to fix a lot of works uh, Cambodian artists uh, would do but no everything went very well and uh, the, it, we had tons of problems in Europe so, <laughs> uh, so you have to how do you direct so many different locations did you fly from one to the other and uh, I, I fly, yeah, but it was just only to say hello, uh, to meet people, because uh, uh, it's important to know the people who are involved uh, in the film, and um, of course, obviously, the, the most moving moment in the production was uh, in Cambodia, when I talked to the Cambodian artist, telling them that, uh, well, it's a story based on my mom, but it's our story. And the proof is that you are alive today, because uh, in, especially in Cambodia, everyone survived from the Khmer Rouge. So it was very strong, and uh, so how did we, how we, how uh, the film was done uh, without a low with low budgets? Well, we use um, Google, YouTube in order to share all the shots and to approve, to make the retakes, to send some remarks. Uh, so we needed to create an account, so. Uh, Google Sheets. You cannot imagine my, my, my I, I called it the director's uh, sheet. So uh, there's all the department, every country, and yeah, it was so impressive. Uh, beside the film, this is the piece of art. <laughs> and uh, uh, Skype, a lot of Skype. Uh, I needed to talk with uh, sometimes 10 or 20 people at the same time. We didn't have uh, the, I mean, the, the uh, yeah, we didn't have the time sometimes to just send a files. So they just send a picture to me through Skype and I made correction and sent back to them. And it was the most um, exhaustive moments in the film. Worth it. Uh, I have more questions, but I think we'd like to open it up. Would you mind for some questions from the audience? Would anybody like to ask uh, Denis a question? Is, is he English? In English? Andy? Uh, what is the meaning of the title? Um, Funan. Uh, I cho I have choose, I have chosen, chosen. <laughs> the, the title uh, uh, since the beginning because uh, it's very short and uh, I expect people to remind it. Uh, it sounds Asian uh, at least also, but uh, the meaning is Funan is the the, the the name of the the area. It was maybe an empire or uh, many city states. Historians are not very sure about it. Very ancient. Yeah, very ancient. But uh, the historians are all agree that the Khmer civilization blossomed here before. 
So it was really meaningful to me to associate, to put together uh, the beginning of this civilization and its potential to collapse, uh, which is the content of the film. Of course, I assume that it's not explained inside the film itself, but as I said, I believe the audience to, if people are interested about the content, the subject to make research by themselves. Let them Google it. <laughs> yeah, or Wikipedia. Or ask the filmmakers. <laughs> Other questions? Anybody? Don't be shy. In the back. Yeah. How did your experience at uh, Goblin? Uh, I don't think that Goblin is a school for filmmaker. I think that Goblin is uh, very good if you want to learn every kind of uh, techniques to make animation, to have great skill. I still wonder if the students, if the school uh, teach very well, or if the students, when they arrive on the first year, are already good enough to work. You know, so. I'm thinking about the reputation of this school, and sometimes I believe I much I really believe that it's because the student, the the, the, the competition to to enter this school is very very hard, and so the, the consequence is that every student who arrived in the first year are very very good already. Well, I wonder then what was your, not my case. What were your influences? Uh, how did you come to Goblin? Uh, I, 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 I went to Goblin because um, uh, the, it was very hard to go to this school and it's very hard because you have to you need to have a great skill uh, in art in drawings and I didn't know anything about animation before uh, were you a painter? No, 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 no. I was just drawing because I like that, and uh, everyone told me that yeah, to if you want to, if you can go to Goblin, it means that you are a great drawer. That's all. It was a challenge for me, and I discovered animation there. I remember the first co one of the first course co uh, exercise we had it was about uh, layout, and I was not very uh, very serious student. Spend much more time with um, my ex-girlfriend than <laughs> school. So when I arrived uh, at school, we start the exercise, and I discovered the art and didn't. I tried to, yeah, it was um, was not a very bad, good experience. Um, so I, I learned animation. I learned every kind of job uh, in animation. It was very really interesting. It was during our graduation year. I told my, all my friends that uh, you find the story and I will work on the film. Uh, it's okay, I don't want to be much more involved. And then we, they, we find a story, but uh, it didn't work. So we have to work. I, I was more and more involved on it because uh, we, were, we were afraid to be too late uh, in terms of delay of delivery. And uh, we work on a short film called Le Ruban. It's a love story uh, which had to, uh, which take place in China during the Cultural Revolution. Means the ribbon. Yeah, the ribbon. Sorry. And um, before we called it Le Ruban, Le, the ribbon. Uh, it was so. It was a love story, and I told my friend that we should find some things. I mean, physical to represent this love. So we find this uh, uh, rope, uh, so we call the film, this film Le Ruban. And during the storyboarding process, all my friends and classmates who were arguing, um, finding solution, creating. And I think this is precisely at that moment, I understood that animation was so powerful. We can tell what we want. And during the uh, coffee and cigarette uh, break with uh, one of uh, uh, the co-directors of the sh this short film. I share with him the, my, my mom experience during the Khmer Rouge. Uh, I don't know why I did that, uh, but we talk a lot. So, uh, And he was uh, yeah, shocked and 
he said, you should make a film. It was in March 2009 and everything starts like that. Before you came to the school, who were your influences in terms of filmmakers? Who did you admire? It was the Artists and filmmakers? Um, I'll get to the bottom of this. Uh, I didn't grow up with a... I will be honest with you, I don't want to impress you with uh, any kind of uh, impressive background. I come from a very modest family, um, and culture for my family is not really important. Uh, we are, my parents are more thinking about surviving than learning or stuff like that. So I, for example, when I arrived in Goblin, I, I understood that in terms of culture, uh, about comics, about uh, cinema, I was really uh, empty, and I start to watch film a bit at uh, since uh, yeah the the school, and I didn't love uh, Disney uh, at all because I think I was too old at that time already, and uh, in terms of influence. I would be straight to the point. The film which influenced me the most for Funan is uh, uh, was made by uh, Zhang Yimou, a Chinese film director, and it's called uh, Live. Uh, and it's, the, it's a family story uh, during the Cultural Revolution, and uh, I think at some point, yeah, it was very strong and inspiring for Funan. And uh, I do love Chinese film director like uh, so Zhang Yimou, Wong Kar Wai, Chiang Kai Ge, and uh, yeah. Any particular animated films that you inspire you? Uh, I, 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 I think I like uh, what uh, uh, Isao Takata. I, 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 I love his uh, film. All of his films, and the my favorite. Uh, no, yeah, but uh, my favorite one is more of my neighbors, the Yamada. Not in the tones of. Uh, from, um, Were you saying that we have five more minutes, or five more minutes? Five more minutes. Another question from the audience, maybe. Over there. In the back. Uh, how did your little brother react to the film? My, my little brother or my big brother? Big brother. Big brother. Big brother. Big brother. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he has not watched the film yet because uh, we don't have time to catch together and he's quite busy. Uh, he was very, very busy last year because um, family stuff. And, but uh, uh, we are trying to make a, a screening in the cinema close to his place. And uh, well, but not about the film. He is completely disconnected to Cambodia. He didn't. He doesn't want to go back anymore. Uh, I tell you that because I used to talk about, talk to him about Cambodia, about uh, his source story, and he doesn't want to look back anymore. Well, he was separated from your mother, wasn't he, during yeah. that? Yeah. Can you remember? Yeah, he was uh, separated. I asked him many, many stuff, of course, before making the film, and yeah, in order to be inspired also by his... Uh, Would he talk to you about it? Yeah, he talked to me, but um, as a big brother, and so he's, for example, his weakness, stuff like that, he was not really uh, open to share it with me, and uh, he also... Like my mother, sometimes he hides himself behind a kind of uh, uh, shell. He starts to laugh, to to smile, also, and he always wants to try to show me that uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime he was afraid of nothing and he was uh, uh, very smart. Uh, he has no problems. Uh, the Khmer Rouge were jealous of him because he was too smart, stuff like that, you know, just. To maybe to impress or to protect also himself. And um, I stopped asking him uh, his uh, testimonies because one day I discovered that uh, sometimes, maybe in order to hide himself also, he invent testimonies. 
and I was disappointed uh, by that. Uh, for I can tell you what the little girl inside the film. Uh, he told me that uh, he has a close relation with a little girl, uh, kind of love relationship. I thought it was quite romantic, quite beautiful, and I wanted to depict it. But I stopped at that, at that point and I started to create by myself a, a relation. And one day I, uh, I came back to him, the storyboard was done, the production was done, we just had a coffee together. And I asked him again about uh, this, little, this little girl. And he said, what little girl? I said, the one you mentioned, the one you, you maybe loved before. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, there is no girl at all. Uh, there is only one girl. I had good relation with her during the Khmer Rouge regime. It was my cousin. I said, OK. <laughs> I stopped asking you. And uh, even today, when I, I ask him again, uh, not for the film, but just for talking, uh, what he already told me before, he keeps changing. And I don't really understand uh, why he's doing that, if he's conscious about that or not. We have to stop, I think. But I, I just want to ask you one more thing. What are you working on now? What, uh, another animated film? A yeah. serious subject? Uh, serious depends the point of view. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm laughing because inside the new project there is a child. He spent his time to pee on everyone. Uh, is that <laughs> and uh, no, it's a, a story. This new story will happen in, Cambo in the Cambodia of today. Uh, I will give you only some keywords, keywords because I cannot share the story at that mo at this moment. It will be shiny. It will be very brightful and inspiring for the new generation. I hope, and it will be filled full with rock and roll of the sixties. <laughs> and. Uh, why? Because I believe that uh, to work about the memory should also allow us to tell about brightful memories. And so that's why, to me, memories is not only dark, it could be very bright and inspiring. And it'll be a feature. Yeah. Hopefully made less than eight years. Uh, I hope to start it next year. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you very much.